Stroke is a focal neurological deficit, okay. which is of no other origin but cardiovascular in origin. Depression is the leading cause of disability. Depression on its own is it's a persistent feeling of sadness, okay. a persistent feeling of hopelessness. Hello viewers, welcome to this week's episode of Health Watch on Advent Cable Network Nigeria. I am Angela Mweze. On our previous episode, we discussed mental health. On today's episode, we'll be discussing anxiety disorder. And my guest is still Dr. Olusegun Shoyembo. He's a consultant psychiatrist with the National Hospital, Abuja. Doctor, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us today to discuss um, last um, episode we discussed um, mental, mental health, health in general. and then we were able to clear that mental health does not mean there's something wrong with you, it doesn't mean you're mad, it doesn't mean you're going cold, it's just like any other ailment, like malaria, like um, physical, any other physical ailment. So we need to balance our mental health for us to live effectively. So we concluded on that at the last episode. And th this, um, today we're going to be discussing anxiety disorder. Now, when I saw this word anxiety disorder, I just felt, ah, is there a problem? It, any, everybody can be anxious. <laughs> Anybody can, if you're expecting something, can be anxiety can come in. So how does it become a disorder? So what exactly is anxiety disorder? <laughs> well, anxiety disorders refers to a group of oh, disorders. disorders. Yes. Okay. A group of disorders, really, characterized mainly by anxiety and i like the way you put it anxiety is a normal part of our everyday being mm -hmm. for example in school you pick up a textbook to read and it doesn't seem to be flowing you read and read you can't get past maybe one or two chapters for the whole semester then all of a sudden two weeks to exam you can finish the textbook in mm. a in, in a few days Okay, several chapters. Yeah, I did that okay? a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, anxiety is a normal part of life. For another example is what we call the fight or flight response, mm -hmm. a survival instinct. When we, wear, when we hear a sudden noise, boo, what in us tells us to run? You run, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. You okay? start running before you before realize you're running. So, performance anxiety, you are going for an interview, you are going into an examination hall, it's normal to be anxious. However, when we talk about anxiety disorders, we talk about anxiety that most people will regard as disproportionate. Okay? okay. Disproportionate. Not only disproportionate. Anxiety that now impairs your functioning. Remember, okay. I said we couldn't read. Now we are covering several chapters in just a few days. That kind of anxiety has enhanced your ability you to, prepare to prepare for that exam. There's a bomb blast or an explosion. You run. Mm -hmm. That anxiety has enhanced your ability to survive in okay. that circumstance. So, uh, normally, anxiety has a positive role. It sure. has something positive. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. But when we talk about the anxiety disorders, it's the anxiety is so much that it begins to have negative effects. Just the way you talk about diminishing returns. Okay, return, so there's okay. a level of anxiety that begins to impair with your ability to achieve what you are set to achieve. Mm. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot, tell me. <laughs> no, not a lot of, <laughs> not a lot of sense. Okay. Okay, but <clears throat> what are the pointers to when you're having anxiety? What is pointing to you that you might be having anxiety disorder? Or what are the types of, since you said that they are different No, classes. no, I like your first. Okay, the first the question. Fir I, okay. Like the, I like the first question. Well, certainly we'll come back to the second okay. question. But your first question, I will ask you with a question also. Okay, okay. How do you feel when you're anxious? What are some of the things you experience when you're anxious? Okay. It's a heartbeat. Now. Heart, heart, my heart your starts heart beating, beating fast. Now, normally, you are not aware. Your heart is beating as we are speaking. Normally, yes. And you are not aware that it is beating. Okay. So you have that kind of heartbeat that you become aware. It's almost mm -hmm. as if the heart mm -hmm. is going to come out of heart. the chest. You can almost hear it, you know. Yeah. It is fast. It's uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. not a very pleasant experience. So that is one. What else? Okay. Sweat. Sweating. <laughs> Sweating. A lot of yeah. people experience that. They begin to sweat. Okay. 
What okay. do you see? What do they, what do they, in home videos, when they want to show that somebody is anxious, what do you see? person brings that and catches his face AC and he's yeah, cleaning yeah, yeah. his face. It's like, you see, that's also a sign of an anxiety, a symptom. Okay. Okay. So, so there are several mm. things that people can experience when they are anxious. Like we said, there are different types of anxiety. Mm. So fear, for example, sometimes yeah. it is specific fear of something. Sometimes it's just a general fear foreboding, something bad is going to happen. You don't even know what you are scared of. Sometimes it's people running to use the bathroom several times. Mm -hmm. Some people, mm -hmm. when they are anxious, that is the problem. They begin to just go and pass water to pass water stool and all that. Or the stomach begins to Try rumble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people begin to feel some numbness or some crawling sensations around their body. Some person may tell you, oh, it's as if there's a load on my neck or my shoulder, mm -hmm. or it's like something is pressing my head, right. or oh, I have this test chest tightness, it's like I cannot breathe very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't think we can exhaust the list of how people feel when they are anxious, really. Yeah. Okay, but that's, that's now for general anxiety, when people are just, that's, that should be natural. If I have now, when you say general them, anxiety... Does that... Because that's what well, I feel when something is about to yes, happen. Yes. Does it not mean I have some a problem? Isn't it supposed to be normal? So like I've said, okay. is this severe enough to impair your functioning? I'll All give you an example. Right. Okay. Somebody has this sudden onset of severe breathlessness, chest pounding, mm -hmm. sweating, feeling breathless. Person feels like, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. They rush the person to the emergency mm -hmm. they check the blood gases they check the blood pressure they check everything physically they can't find anything physically wrong with the patient they will even do ecg do x-ray do they can't find anything physically wrong okay. with the patient let us say this thing happened while the person was in the car going to work <coughs> mm -hmm. and then after that the person now has this morbid fear that if i get into a car again that thing will happen again Okay. Now, this person can't go anywhere. How many places can he trek to mm. from his house? That's the impairment that we're talking about. When you've described how you feel, when somebody now feels it to the point that, oh, sleep is a problem, I cannot sleep. And when I, c I do not sleep well, I am not able to concentrate enough to read the following day to prepare for the exam. My hands are shaking and mm -hmm. I can't gather my thoughts together to the point that I cannot write an exam. Almost everybody who wrote that exam perhaps felt anxious. Yeah. But somebody has now felt a lot of anxiety to the point of perhaps not being able to write the exam. Oh, now you know. Now it's making sense because I remember in my university when we do our project defense, I, I had a classmate, and when I met him, he was trying to do a defense the fourth time because any time he came, he comes in front of um, the lecturers. You know, he knows everything he wants to do, but the, uh, he's just, he loses <coughs> control and he never gets to, yes, do, to that do that presentation. presentation. Okay, so he, he, you see him, he just starts swearing and shouting and next thing he leaves the room and starts crying because he just can't. So that would be somebody who is really having a problem. Yes. Okay. So, so. so there's <coughs> several, why would somebody be having that? Because it's supposed to be natural, but when it goes, you know, mm -hmm. is it post-traumatic event or what could be responsible for somebody becoming to I know you I'm just stealing from what you mentioned <laughs> about somebody used to drive a car before I just trying to be you know yeah. well I like how you steal words <laughs> because you've mentioned generalized anxiety generalized anxiety disorder is a specific diagnosis okay post-traumatic stress disorder is a specific diagnosis okay. we've got what we call a social anxiety disorder We've got the specific phobias. So there are quite a number okay, so of them. Okay, so we'll talk okay. bits and pieces okay. about them. But let's talk about the general one. Okay, okay. Because that one is quite common. And it's called a generalized anxiety disorder. And it's usually anxiety that is generalized. You can't pin the, even the person that is anxious cannot tell you this is what I'm anxious about. Okay. There's just this general feeling on, on easiness mm -hmm. or is something bad going to happen i just feel that my chest is tight oh i can't breathe well oh there's something on this part of my body something is pressing me down but you may not find that it may you, for for example it may not be that that person is writing an exam okay okay 
if we talk about specific phobias, when we talk about generalized anxiety disorders, we like to differentiate by, for example, by mentioning specific phobias. Somebody can have fear of height, yes. fear of close places. All the phobia, phobia, phobia people Sometimes talk about. I do have fear, fear of, of height. Spiders. When I just look through a height, I see if I'm falling already. Yes. So a lot of people have that fear mm -hmm. of height, but there are some people. There is not at gunpoint they will not climb a pedestrian bridge wow. because of a fear of height. Fear of so you see these things exist in degrees. So it's not everybody that is anxious that has an anxiety disorder. disorder because okay. being anxious, anxiety itself is a part of our everyday being. It's okay. just that some people have it in a severe form that affects their functioning and those are the people who say have anxiety. Disorder. So back to generalized anxiety disorder. So it's that general foreboding that okay. that person has that we cannot pinpoint. And there's no other thing that explains why that person is feeling that way. Mm -hmm. It's not because he has smoked. It's not because he has drank. Mm -hmm. It's not because of any prescription medication that any doctor has given. Yeah, yeah. His heart is beating fast, but we've done ECG, he's seen cardiologists, he's seen this, he's seen that. Everything, everything is fine. Everything. Physically, there's no explanation. There's no physically acceptable explanation why you should be having those experiences mm, mm, mm. okay and mm. that's quite different from the other for example post-traumatic stress that's one i want to talk because i know that post-traumatic stress disorder by its very name mm. suggests that there's a trauma attached to it not just any kind of trauma severe life-threatening trauma Okay. okay, those are the kind of people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. So where do you see post-traumatic stress disorders? Soldiers who have been on the war front. Okay, okay. that's why you call the PTSD. PTSD, okay. yeah, firemen who go and rescue people in terrible situations. Mm. Okay, people who have come faced with death, yeah. who have been attacked by hand robbers. Women, when they are attacked by rapists, okay, vicious and violent mm -hmm. crimes like that, natural disasters you know and things like that so those are so so there must have been severe trauma and then following that trauma the person has anxiety, anxiety. symptoms okay. what are some of the anxiety symptoms that a person has in post-traumatic stress disorder <coughs> one of them will be relieving the event flashback kind flashbacks of okay. as though it was happening all over not only do they relieve it, when they relieve it, they have those unpleasant anxiety symptoms. So all those things we talk about, heart pounding, mm. sweating, okay, difficult, poor concentration, etc. All those things, when they relieve it, they know that this thing has happened before. It's not happening all, yeah. all over. But when they have that flashback, those feelings come back. Mm. People have post-traumatic disorder, have what we call avoidance. They don't want to talk about that topic. They don't want anything at all. To, to remind them to that about that topic, Th they start too easily. Okay, mm. somebody has been on the front line in a war situation for a long time. Every little noise looks like gun or like bomb. So mm. somebody opens the door and shuts the door. And he jumps jump up, okay. and all of those things. So that's wh when you talk about post-traumatic stress. Mm. Uh, no, I'm just Th thinking there's what we call now we are just talking yeah, in know, bits and pieces. <laughs> so for example, I will mention some that people are not even aware. There's what we call social anxiety disorder. Okay? Social anxiety disorder is anxiety that is related to being in a small group. Okay? Where somebody feels like he's under undue scrutiny. Okay? So mm -hmm. when he's in a group of say six, ten people, he feels that they are paying undue attention to him mm -hmm. and he feels uneasy you know if he has to talk in that place he begins to stutter or things like that his heart is beating it can be as severe as running away mm. have not someone who the anxiety disorder this heart social anxiety disorder whatever you do if we say in this ACNNO all of us will do presentation once a month the day that it is Angela's turn, you don't have social anxiety mm. disorder. Sorry that I'm mentioning <laughs> your name. I mean, yeah. the day that it is that person's turn to do the this thing, we have drawn the timetable oh, that 10 o'clock is tea break. 10.30, you come up. During that tea break, between tea break and that 10.30, the person you don't disappears. Don't <laughs> the pe yeah. it, will just, it can never oh. muster enough courage to come and do. So there are people who feel under such undue scrutiny and then they prefer to be lost in large 
crowds, crowds okay, where they are not known. where they are not you see so there are people who have fear of large spaces there are people who have fear of closed spaces closed there, there, fear. there are people who have fear of specific situations for example some people cannot bear the sight of blood so they avoid hospitals mm, mm -hmm. okay you have things like that some people have this morbid fear of spiders or furry animals or things like that okay. all sorts and of course we must not forget you have the obsessive compulsive disorder ocd okay where I mean, people I, yeah. you heard about ocd yeah. it has two components obsessions and compulsions obsessions are thoughts compulsions are acts okay. now an ocd for example is one of the conditions that might be severely aggravated by something like the coronavirus so imagine somebody has a disorder where he always feels like his hands are dirty and every time that he feels like his hands are dirty, he feels it so strongly that he has to go and wash exactly. his hands. And if by mistake, as he was moving his hand, his finger brushed something like this, he feels that everywhere is dirty. So uh, he quickly he needs to go and wash again. his hands again. Wow. You understand? Or, they, or somebody. The people that are excessively neat. So, 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 so that thought that my hands are dirty is the obsession. Okay. The hand washing Absolutely. ritual is the compulsion. Okay. So how does this affect people? Take for example, somebody who somehow, somehow, the thought always comes into his mind that it's like you did not switch off your gas. So he's going to work, he gets to the bus stop. <laughs> so it's like I left the gas so before the house will burn before I come back. He goes go and back. checks and the gas is off. And halfway to the bus stop again, he just feels like, did I switch it off? Did I not switch it off? And then he goes back to check. How long do you think it will take for that? It may never get to get work to that work. day. Oh, wow. And all that. So, there are several disorders that come under that rubric anxi of anxiety okay. disorders. Okay, so anxiety, okay, now I understand. Anxiety disorder is not because OCD on its own, for example. It's an anxiety it's, disorder, it's a, generalized anxiety disorder is mm -hmm. an anxiety disorder. Social mm -hmm. anxiety disorder is an anxiety disorder. Yes. Post traumatic stress yes. disorder. Adjustment disorder, but different things. Okay, you know why? You know which is getting my interest now is the post-traumatic one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, sometimes it feels like they don't exist here, but I th you, uh, as a do. professional, you see it they every do. time, and you they have do. to work through with this. Before we even talk about how to find help and start getting help, now let's talk about the post-traumatic one and why it's coming to my mind is on. You know, there's this recent um, thing about rape these days we, we did i think uh, some episodes ago we we talked on rape you know and w one of the things we talked about was what happens to the victim yes, you know afterwards mm -hmm. and so that post-traumatic disorder i'm just pulling out the word rape because it's everywhere now it's looking like it's everywhere or well, maybe it's the social media that made it more everywhere or i don't know if it's increased i don't know what it is but should i go straight to that yes how does somebody how does somebody deal with such an incident in their life? I don't know if I'm jumping the guns, but that's what's just coming to my mind because these things are there's so many people I know watching if you bring up that mm. issue, you hear stories and you just wonder, oh my God, this is um, terrible. I was not real, but I was close to that experience, but I know how it plays in my, it played in my mind for a long time. So if you don't know if you can talk a little bit on that, especially using <coughs> that particular topic. Again, yeah. it's, it's difficult to find a straight jacketed, uh, to say a one size fits all way mm -hmm. of how people should respond. However, there are standard things that people should do. And I'm sure you probably talked about that during your episode mm -hmm. on rape. Okay. Mm -hmm. That what should a person do in the immediate aftermath of such a, a heinous, or very mm. terrible experience that somebody should have. First is to seek medical attention. Maybe I'm not saying it in the order they'll tell you that safety first. The person mm -hmm. has to mm -hmm. get away from that situation, situation. of mm -hmm. trouble and get into a safe environment, mm -hmm. okay? And then seek medical help. The person needs to be examined. There might be need to use certain medications. You want to prevent HIV, HIV. you want to yeah. prevent pre unwanted yeah. pregnancies and things like that. Because it's usually such a vicious crime there are possibilities that the person would have been injured mm -hmm. okay because the assailant might have used so much force and caused some injuries so those injuries need to be treated and things like that and the person needs a lot of emotional support at that time mm -hmm. and now all of these things when you do them might reduce the incidence it's difficult to predict who or what 
will have who, who will have PTSD in the mm. aftermath of a traumatic event. However, okay. in the after, aftermath of a traumatic event, we must provide as much emotional support to that person, and then we just watch and okay, see. Okay, and see. Okay, so that should be part of the treatment for yes. for victims when somebody comes with this kind of thing. So the yeah. counselling and all that. Okay, so um, the the next thing that I'm going to be thinking about now. Okay, let's go back to treatment. You know. I, I know the treatment procedure <laughs> will meet you in the hospital and but what, what people can what people can do you know probably to prevent well I, I, I'm trying to think for how to coin this question but what can people do I don't know if you know get to, to ask prevent you, ask you that to see if you find <laughs> <laughs> to prevent themselves from because because some people manage things well you know, there's some people that things happen to them and they just move on to the next thing. And they're not now, now let, us, let us say very clearly okay. that we might have talked, um, and I will apologize if I've sounded like all anxiety disorders have to do with some significant events in people's life okay. causing mm -hmm. the anxiety disorder. No, if we're to talk about the etiology, that, that is what causes anxiety mm -hmm. disorders, is a whole discussion okay. on its own. Okay. There's genetic predisposition okay. already. Mm -hmm. There are people that will have it just because they're genetically predisposed to having it. So, for example, oh, maybe right. somebody in the family already has it. So the question is, what do you do to prevent yourself from having somebody, something that somebody in the family has? How, okay. many, thi how many preventive measures can you really, can you really take? Some, some people will have it anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, we we'll talk about coping mechanisms. That's why we we'll talk about mental health promotion. Okay. okay? So we we'll talk about these mental health things in general so that we can help people build resilience, okay, build their coping mechanisms in the face of adversities and things like that so that we reduce. But in spite of all of this, some people will still have mm -hmm. anxi anxiety, anxiety disorder. disorder. Eating disorder, for example, mm -hmm. where some people just feel that they are too fat. This person is very slim. Anorexia. My person, feel, uh, you know, you know mm -hmm. and then they feel yeah. they have this body image problems, you know, and no other person understands it. They, they don't want to eat. They grow very thin and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So some of these things because of the genetic predisposition. But there's also the social cost, okay? What kind of person does the media put outside okay, as a beautiful yes, one, mm -hmm. woman? So if you are talking of prevention, we can address that and okay. say, okay, the media stop putting only thin women out there as beautiful, beautiful so that everybody doesn't begin to aspire to be this thin. So in terms of prevention, that can be a measure, but mm -hmm. notwithstanding, there are other causes too. Okay. okay so, so, so the way to say it is that there are modifiable causes and there are, for, there are causes that we cannot modify. So, for okay. example, genetic predisposition. You can't do we can't anything, do anything about, about that. that. Yeah. Okay. The what of the modifiable one now? Yes. So, so, so it now it now comes to specific okay, conditions. Okay. Different conditions. Specific conditions. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Let's. Let, okay. I, the one that I know is. Well, it maybe it's not common. Maybe it's because for somebody like me, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just, I'm, maybe I might be selfish, <laughs> but you know, I always see the things of things that you know. Everybody just thinks if something is having to do with your mental state, it has something to do with something that happened to you before, uh, which is the post-traumatic one, which is you know, I, I think even in the movies when you watch it, you see it happening, playing before. But look, look, there's a generalized one now that mm. you talked about at first. For those people that have. Um, Let's start with the generalized one. So the diagnosis for mm -hmm. it now. How do you go about finding out about some? This is to help. You know, we talked about help that comes from other people. Because mm -hmm. sometimes somebody might not even know that mm -hmm. they have this kind of um, problem. Mm -hmm. Then somebody might notice it and then help them. Because most of the time, just as you, you know, you, you've said, somebody brings them to the hospital. You know, or sometimes some people come themselves. So what are, what are the things you're looking at? A a again, this is a question one will try to answer very responsibly and carefully. Okay. Because you see, all the things that we'll talk about are part of normal, everyday experiences. And we don't want people slamming diagnoses on themselves or on other people to say, oh, I watch ACN and the doctor said that if you sweat inside AC, anxiety disorder, if you go to toilet two times, <laughs> no, 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 that's not what we're talking <coughs> about. So I want our viewers to take the information that we give very okay. carefully. One of the things you see with anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, 
For example, in our society, you know that we are not wired to convey emotional distress. How are you? you? Fine. Kedu, Odima, Ayajiki, Lafia Lao, Baolare, Alafia. In all of our languages, all we say is we are fine. fine. And sometimes when people are not fine psychologically, it may begin to play out physically. Mm -hmm. So you have people going from one hospital to the other. Oh, my leg is spinning me. Oh, there's something in my neck. Oh, there's something in my throat. Oh, there's something crawling all over my body. All sorts of symptoms affecting different parts of their bodies. Mm -hmm. And then they will go from one hospital to the to other. The this hospital has not been able to diagnose what is wrong with them. So they move and go to the next hospital. They go to a laboratory and run a test. They say nothing is wrong with them. They say maybe their result is not reliable. They move to another place. So mm -hmm. sometimes multiple bodily symptoms, we call them multiple somatic symptoms, mm -hmm. can be a pointer to an anxiety disorder. Okay, in so fact, you, you there is different parts of yeah, so, so, so in fact, there is an anxiety disorder called somatic symptom disorder, okay. where the person just continues to complain of symptoms in different parts of the body. And the person is not faking it. The person genuinely feels these things, except that they are of psychological origin. And we only come to the conclusion that they are of psychological origin when we have excluded possible physical causes. Mm, so the person okay. has done blood sugar, has checked blood pressure, mm -hmm. has done HIV test, has done hepatitis test, has done ultrasound, has done this, has done that. And there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong yeah. that accounts for the symptom or the severity of impairment the person feels from that mm. symptom. Okay. So, so again, it's a difficult question that we are trying to answer and that's here, a, that's a to thing. pick specifics and say, oh, people who are watching, when you feel this way, I think it's a general... Um, admonition okay. that we are going to give okay. that when people don't feel well they should go to hospital I will say this and I'll say it very responsibly even in medical practice it's not easy a lot of people don't get diagnosed of anxiety disorder in their first visit to the hospital, the hospital. so you begin to see how difficult it might be to expect lay people out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. to understand to immediately pick it in people around then okay. some people it is when they've gone several visits to hospital that one doctor will say i think this thing is of psychological origin and then refer them okay, to see a psychiatrist okay. because they don't come directly to nobody i, I don't think most, most people will not come now we are having more enlightenment there are some people who will come and say i feel this way okay. i feel anxious i can't relax i can't you know there are people who feel that way but for most people no that's not how they will present okay so now what is okay we, we will go on a break. When we come back, I want to talk about um, the use of um, substance as opposed to this disorders that we're talking about, if it has any influence. Because I know most of the times when you hear people talk about um, anxiety and say people who drink a lot, I don't know if there's any connection yet. But we when we come it. back, we'll establish that and talk about that. So we'll be right back, viewers. I can't believe what my boss just said to me. She must think I'm doing a terrible job. I have to quit. All my friends are so happy when they go out. I don't get it. I can't even imagine what they're thinking of me. If I don't get this internship, I'll never get a job. I don't know what else I can do. I'm stuck. I hate airports. Driving there, construction, traffic, parking, and then security, everything about it just overwhelms me. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health problems. While everyone experiences stress and anxiety at some point in life, some people become so overwhelmed that they can't manage their day-to-day -day or minute-to-minute -minute lives. I know. One of these voices is mine. There are several types of anxiety, and they can affect people in different ways. You might have heard of specific phobia, social phobia, panic disorder, or generalized anxiety disorder, or others. Some of these seem like they might be manageable, like a fear of heights. It's not always convenient to avoid tall buildings, but you could do it. 
Others, like panic disorder or social phobia, might be harder to manage because they cause problems at unpredictable times, like when you're in public. Each anxiety disorder is different, but basically they all have one thing in common. They cause excessive worry that affects thoughts, feelings, and physical symptoms, and that causes problems in a person's life for at least six months. For me, I struggled with generalized anxiety disorder. I was worried about everything. Things I couldn't control, like getting stuck in traffic and being late for an appointment, made me really angry. I worried about what other people thought of me. Looking at my schedule each morning was the worst part of my day. It felt impossible to do everything I put on my list. This really caused problems in my relationships. I yelled at people. I know I seemed demanding and rigid. At night, I was exhausted and sad, and I'd cry because I was so upset. Most people with anxiety disorders also experience physical symptoms, like shortness of breath, racing heart, and sweating. Some people even get headaches or high blood pressure. Stress and anxiety are very real physical problems. Eventually, people avoid doing anything stressful so they don't have these symptoms. The good news is that anxiety disorders are treatable. Cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, exposure therapy, and acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, are evidence-based treatments that can treat any type of anxiety disorder. Relaxation techniques, controlled breathing, and meditation have also been shown to be effective in reducing the physical symptoms of anxiety. There are lots of medications that are also helpful, including medications for depression and anxiety known as SSRIs and SNRIs. Social support, stress management, and self-care techniques are also common parts of any treatment plan for an anxiety disorder. I was worried about so many things for so long, but I got help. I worked with a great counselor and took an SSRI. I even started yoga. Now, when I begin to feel stress, I can look at the situation more carefully, slow down my breathing, and take care of any tasks that are reasonable. Treatment can really help people overcome their symptoms of anxiety. I know, I did. Welcome back viewers. Before we went on the break, we were discussing anxiety disorder and my guest is still Dr. Olusha Gunsharembo. He's a consultant psychiatrist with the National Hospital Abuja. All right, so we've been discussing anxiety. That, it's, a, it's a huge umbrella. It's actually really, um, you, somebody really needs to come and see you and <laughs> get themselves sorted out because it's a really uh, big one. But I'm glad that we're able to pull out some of this silent things that we say even carelessly sometimes for example like the ocd we just talk about ah, that man has an ocd you know he's too neat so what's his issue mm -hmm. the problem so we've been able to bring out that that people can actually look for help and then when they get to you of course they'll know um, what to do at that point but before we went on the break i said we want to establish the use of drugs or alcohol relates as relating to anxiety um, um disorder what's the relation any relationship between the two now, naturally, mm -hmm. when we feel anxious, we look for ways to relieve the anxiety, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there are good ways of relieving anxiety, and there are not so good ways, mm -hmm. bad ways, in fact, of relieving anxiety. Okay. One of the ways people relieve their anxiety, which is not good, is by abusing substances. Substance. Okay. So you see people who say, oh, when I drink, it calms my nerves. Mm. You see people who say they smoke well, they smoke more when they are nervous. And then you see people get into all other kinds of okay. drugs. Mm. Okay? Now what they are doing is in trying to solve one problem, they are creating another, another problem. Mm. Because a lot of these psychoactive substances act in such a way that the level of use will escalate. Mm. Okay? Yes, so you cannot. You so because you are having difficulty sleeping, you drink a bottle or take a tablet or something. It helps you to sleep. But very soon, you realize that one bottle, one tablet is no longer able to help you sleep. Mm -hmm. It increases to two, then increases mm -hmm. to three, mm -hmm. then increases to four. Then later, it's not about sleeping again. It becomes something that you are taking in the morning, you are taking in the afternoon, afternoon. and consumes your entire Mm. Being. So straight up, the relationship between anxiety and drugs is a two-way relationship. Okay. People who have a substance use problem can have anxiety disorder. 
and people who have anxiety disorders can you try to use substances to relieve, to relieve their the anxiety, anxiety but which is not even going to which help. is not going to help them in the long run let's talk about this uh, drug abuse you know the use of some of this substance it's it's prevalent now and I like the fact that you said um, people try to use it to relieve anxiety. Some people is just, you know, we're just doing it as friends, you know, mm -hmm. to prove myself that I'm not a, I'm not a less of a man or less of a person. So I joined the, the team of people that are doing this. Now, we have an issue of drug abuse in, in, in the country. Why are we having this high increase? One of it you've talked about is anxiety. So we know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fix the problem of anxiety. We know that it's more than that, sure. especially if it's that much. So what, what again? Why are we having so much issues with? Well, drug? before before we go on, I hope that we can. I hope that you can find time to devote an entire episode to drug, drug abuse. abuse because it's too big a topic to just drug bring up under mm -hmm. something. But it's mm -hmm. okay for the benefit of our viewers. We'll mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it. There are several reasons. There are several causes. But the reality, the fact that it's on ground, is like it's almost a pandemic on its own. If we call it an epidemic, which we have been calling it, but since the coronavirus has been declared a pandemic, the drug use problem is also all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's all mm -hmm. over the world, okay? So it's a very huge problem. problem. You have young people, um, sometimes it's peer pressure, pressure. okay, from mm -hmm. friends and things like that. Sometimes it's just they themselves seeking excitement, okay? Being misguided, you know, to say you can find joy and happiness and excitement in so, so, so things. Sometimes it's because they are dealing with problems that they do not know how else to address. address. And then using the drugs, some of them go and take solace in using drugs or other uh, alcohol or other mm. substances yes, yes, yes. like that. So there are several reasons. Some people, unfortunately, get introduced to the drug that they abuse through medical treatment. Prescription, that's what I was just about Prescription to. medications. Mm -hmm. So a doctor has prescribed the drug for something else and they have discovered that this drug has so, so, so effect in them which they find pleasurable and they desire to have more of that effect. Mm -hmm. So they go back and take the drug without the doctor's prescription. prescription. So yeah. these are some of the causes okay. of substance use. Substance use. Disorders, yes. So it's not, it's, 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 it's broader. Sure. Uh, it's obviously broader than we can even um, make out of it. But what I'm trying to, okay, so when somebody is, I'm, I'm doubling into this now, mm -hmm. when somebody notices that they are, they are hooked on a particular, like now we have the, um, the, there's this particular cough syrup, cough syrup. that um, everybody is the, until this moment I still don't know how what it is about it that makes it something that young people abuse I really don't know what exactly is the concept codeine I don't know what it does but now somebody is hooked on this what are what do they do to come out of this because mind you they were trying to drown something because I don't think people just start taking drugs some people do but something leads to something, you know. So how did they begin to come out of it? Did they need to come and start going to look for, go to the hospital to look for help or continue taking it and hoping that one day it will stop miraculously. Maybe they go for a deliverance service and then get, you know, a, a miraculous healing <laughs> from, you know, taking <coughs> of this um, medication. Well, um, it is not always in the way that you've put it to mm. say that something always leads to something. Um, we do not like to make excuses mm. for people to abuse substances. Okay. There's nobody should be abused. Nobody should be using something that is harmful, harmful to himself or to yeah. herself. Uh, before I answer the question, perhaps I should let I should talk a bit about when people, how people can realize that they have a drug use problem. Okay. Okay. How do you realize that there's a drug drug use problem? There's um, there are four questions we ask. It's specific to alcohol, mm -hmm. but I will talk about other drugs, for example. Mm -hmm. For alcohol, for example, when we want to determine that somebody has an alcohol use problem, problem. we ask about cage, C-A-G-E, cage, that you keep okay. a dog cage, or something, C-A-G-E. The C stands for cut down. If you yourself realize that the level of alcohol you are using 
is so much that you desire or you realize that you need to reduce the amount that you are using. That is what cut down stands for. Mm. Okay. Okay. So when you, you yourself, start realizing you that yourself look, realize that no, this thing this I'm using is, is plenty. I need okay. to reduce it. Okay. That's cut down. Okay. A in the cage starts for anger. Okay. Are you such that when your sister, your brother, your mother, your wife, your husband says, uh, uh, this thing you are drinking, is it not getting too much? You get angry. Whenever anybody tries to talk to you about that alcohol use behavior, you get very angry. It's a very touchy area for you. Don't want anybody going there. Okay? What do you mean you are actually afraid of? <laughs> <laughs> the G mm -hmm. is for guilt. You yourself know that when you use this thing, you then feel bad in the aftermath of using it. Mm. Despite that you are using it, but you know that after you are finished using it, and I shouldn't be using it, I shouldn't be drinking like this, I shouldn't be messing myself up like this. Okay. The E is for, I we call it eye opener. Mm. Somebody drinks alcohol to the extent that when he wakes up in the morning, the first thing he does is to take a shot of alcohol. There's an explanation to that. What's the explanation? When we go to sleep, remember that the person is not drinking alcohol in his sleep. In his sleep so yeah. when he sleeps for some hours, what has happened is that he has spent some hours without alcohol. And then when he wakes up suddenly, he needs alcohol to put himself together. So much like he's having withdrawal symptoms. So those are the cage okay, questions. Let, let me go over this cage again. Because it's down. very important because so some because somebody might be watching and this is to let you know that what if you if you, if you look at these questions you know just of course he said mm. this is useful no we'll talk about other, other substances in so general so if you have if you get to cut down see yeah, cage you know that you cage, should cut down cut down mm -hmm. uh -huh, you feel that now this is becoming too much i'm taking mm -hmm. almost a carton of uh, whatever mm -hmm. in in one sitting and you now realize come i need to cut down okay then anger anger okay you when get angry when people try to discuss that with you to okay. say you know don't, don't you shouldn't do be doing this yeah then g is guilt guilt you feel guilty mm -hmm. by your drug use behavior by alcohol use behavior okay and then i open it i so open now you use very early in the, in the morning you wake yeah. up in the morning the first thing is to take a okay. shot of alcohol there are people like that for them to get their day going they have to take a shot of alcohol we we'll call that high opener so those are the cage those are that's the cage so question now, now generally speaking for mm -hmm. other drugs there are a few terminologies that i will explain just for people to know either you or somebody you know has a drug use problem there's what we call tolerance okay tolerance is that you are using a drug the effect that that drug is giving you at that dose you no longer get it you need a higher dose to get that effect mm -hmm. the way to describe it ordinarily to the lay person is you see somebody drink like a, a carton, like you said, mm -hmm. and nothing happens to him. He's okay. It's like he has not taken anything. anything. He probably most likely did not start like that. Mm -hmm. He grew into that. One bottle became two, two. became three, mm -hmm. became four, and became one carton. Became two. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there are people. So And it happens for all that drugs too, whether it is cannabis, whether it is cocaine, whether it is heroin, mm. whether it is codeine, whatever drugs people take, yeah, the you. common thing to these psychoactive substances is that people develop tolerance to mm. them. You know that there's a problem. Yeah. Now, people have withdrawal symptoms. Remember, these things are drugs mm. and they modify your system. Now, when you get used to something, to the extent that when you do not take it, your body reacts. Mm. You are having withdrawal symptoms. Mm -hmm. So alcohol, for example, when people have taken so much alcohol and they don't have access to alcohol, you see them, they begin to shake. Mm -hmm. Okay? They begin to shake. They have tremors. That's a withdrawal symptom. Mm. There are certain drugs that people take that once they've not had access to it in a while, they may begin to vomit, have diarrhea, okay? Running, nose, watery, eyes uh, yeah, and yeah. things like that muzzle cramps mm. some are so severe that the withdrawal symptoms will cause seizure some people mm. have seizures and some people die from withdrawal mm. symptoms okay yeah 
Another evidence that somebody has a drug use problem is that the person continues to use it despite negative effects on his health or on mm. his functioning. So somebody is taking alcohol, but we've done ultrasound, we've told him, look, your liver is yeah, getting yeah. damaged though. See the liver enzymes, we've done blood tests, your liver is going. The person continues to take it. So he okay? has distorted the norm natural order yes. of his body no, and now... No, and it's not, it's not just about physical, physical okay. consequences. Okay. So somebody is using a drug. His wife is saying, I will move out, or I will move out. Or he's still continuing to use the drug. The wife has moved out, he's still using mm -hmm. the drug. Mm -hmm. Somebody is using the drug. They fired you query once, they fired you query twice at work, but you still can't stop using that drug. In yeah. fact, you've lost the job, but you have continued to use the drug. So it's mm -hmm. not just physical it's effects. Physical, so when somebody yeah. continues to use despite harmful effects exactly. of the drug, then somebody uses a drug in such a way that the drug is almost like the most important thing. Mm. It plans his, his life, life around, it. around the drug. I won't, I won't, I'm going, I won't, ah, there's, go, there's, we'll say it's free, but there's so much go slow in Apple. But if I pass the go slow in Apple, that's when I'll see the dealers, then I can buy the, mm. th this thing. Ah, this money, I'm supposed to go and pay school fees. Ah, I can't pay all of this. If I pay all of these school fees now, <laughs> I won't have money mm, left mm, mm, mm. for drug. You see, it plans his life around it around it another evidence is that somebody goes to use the drug in his mind like we said before he already knows he shouldn't be using it or that if he uses it he shouldn't be using it so much mm. so he mm. goes to the beer mm. parlor and say today 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 is only one bottle <laughs> that and i will drink at 7 pm mm. and then at 1 am he's still there yeah. several bottles knocked off so he goes there and then he cannot control the amount that he uses or when he stops <coughs> Wow. using. So these are some of the problems that people have. Some of the symptoms that will tell us that this person has a drug use problem. Okay. We call it dependence. Somebody is dependent upon a drug. The drug, <coughs> the drug pretty much controls. The drug controls the person. Now that I've mentioned dependence, I also want to mention that people should be careful with terminology. Because you see, when people come to hospital for a, and we are treating them for a mental health condition, mm -hmm. they will say, well, I don't want to be dependent on this drug. No, that language, that terminology is a terminology we reserve for those drugs of abuse. If okay. you have diabetes and the doctor is giving you blood to lower your sugar, we do not say you are dependent, dependent on, on the oral lipoglycemics. Mm -hmm. If you have hypertension and we are giving you drugs to lower your blood pressure, we do not say you are dependent upon your antihypertensive Okay, medications. Okay, okay. Those are prescribed the medications. Prescribed they medication. are you have a condition that makes it necessary for you to take that medication. So in the same way, if somebody has depression and I give the person an antidepressant to help the person's mood, the person is not dependent on that medication. The person okay. has a medical condition that warrants him to be on that, that particular, particular medication. medication. So we use dependence to mean that these psychoactive substances that people are taking without a doctor's, doctor's prescription. prescription Okay. okay, and that okay. they cannot control the use that has taken over their entire essence. People have lost their entire fortunes yeah, yeah. to drug use mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say these people are dependent on the drug. Even, even recently, I think the betting is becoming another one. Aha, the, the betting, the betting is yes, yes. So, one. so thank you for bringing that up. So, when we talk about addiction, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not only drugs, there are behavioral well, addiction. addictions. Yeah. Okay, where you talk about gambling pornography, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. internet addiction, yeah. and things like Which that. Which is silent, internet addiction, addiction is yeah, very yeah. silent. <coughs> yes. Somebody said, if, if that's the first thing you look at, if your phone is the first thing you look at, at every, time. every morning, <coughs> then there is a problem somewhere. Well, maybe there's a problem, maybe there's <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> a problem. No, but but, like, about, but, but, like, but like, like I've emphasized over and over yeah. again, in the end, we bring it back mm -hmm. to how much it affects you as a person, person okay. so for example how much of your pocket money or your salary goes to buying data mm, mm. if you are not able to save up to pay your rent you rather try to work instead of taking transport just so that there's money for mm. data and when you have 1000 naira and you are hungry you have to decide should i eat or should i buy mm. 20 gigabyte and then you go and buy the 20 yeah mm. we can begin to say that there's a yeah. problem so there are behavioral addictions yeah, okay. also okay. yes so that's There's really a question I haven't answered and I can't remember it. <laughs> 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 Maybe I think there was something about how people can seek help. 
yes, for, 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 for this you drug know, abuse. For drug abuse. When that's, yeah. I think that's it. I don't know because we just have a few minutes left to, <laughs> to run up this particular um, 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 discussion. But I think we need to, we we're, just we're, touched we're, a little we'll bit. We'll touch it. Help, help is available. Help, okay. That's the first thing. Help mm. is very, very available. People okay. talk of rehabilitation, rehabilitation, rehabilitation. Now, <coughs> the help might be such that yeah. the person, often it is such that the person has to be taken away from the drug. From the drug okay. And that's why I say people go into rehab. You have to be in an environment where you do not have access okay. to the okay. drug. Thank you for making that clear, that yeah. rehab thing. Because when we think, you know, to you, <laughs> what they mean is different from what the average man thinks. Rehab to the average man is I would say, okay. person, that would mean um, you're going. There's something wrong with you. They're going to put you in chains so that you don't run out. Mm -hmm. You know, but rehab can be for just getting better, pulling you away. Now, now that, from now, that, now that you mentioned that, some people use drugs to the extent that it now affects them mentally, the way they behave. They are mm. not themselves mm. again. They are not well. They may hear voices. Yes, they may yes, behave yes. in a disorganized way. They may be violent and all that. Now, when that is the case, that person is treated. Number one, is taken away from the drug use, mm -hmm. and then is treated for that behavioral problem. Mm -hmm. When the person is well, we now come and attend to this rehab no, okay. problem. So when we say rehabilitation, the person that is healing the way that you've described, that my warrant people chaining him and things like that, cannot go into rehab. Because mm. rehab is something you're going to voluntarily. Voluntary. Rehab is what happens when you realize and come to terms with the fact that you have a drug use problem, problem. and that I need help. And this help that I am being offered, I will accept it. Mm. That is the summary of what rehab okay. is. And when okay. people are there, they are kept away from the drug. drug yeah. They are helped to develop new habits. They are helped to be able to say no. To the, to the drugs because yeah. you spend three months in rehab if you like spend one year in rehab the real test of it is that you're going to be discharged and you're going to be in the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as far as the community is concerned these drugs are available everywhere. everywhere so the real success of rehabilitation is that despite the fact that we are in the uh, we're on acnn mm -hmm. what does the bible say it says we are in the world but we are but not, not of, of the, world. the world otherwise god would have yanked us off the moment mm -hmm. we gave our lives to Christ, okay? Yeah. So when somebody goes into a, a rehab and is treated and successful and is discharged into the community, we continue to support the person, person. what we call relapse prevention, prevention okay. so that the person does not go, go back. back to where it's coming. This is a huge one. I think, <laughs> I think this is the, the cage, interesting tolerance, withdrawal and withdrawal symptom and all of that that we've talked about has been amazing. Thank you very much, Dr. Shoyom. Pleasure this always. Is, from the depression to mental <laughs> health to to anxiety disorder, even putting in drug abuse. And thank you so much. We have learned so much today. I wish I could run a recap on everything we have mm. discussed, but the time wouldn't let us do that. So, viewers, thank you very much for staying with us. We've been talking about anxiety disorder, and we talked a little bit about um, drug abuse. And I want to believe that you learned so much about anxiety disorder and drug abuse. In all of this that we have talked about, it's very important to seek help, seek the proper help. You can go to the medical, to the hospital, you know, and then you'll be referred correctly when they've looked at you. There is help in Nigeria. There is help. There is help available for you. Thank you very much for staying with us. My guest on the program today has been Dr. Olushegun um, Shoyombo, and he's a consultant psychiatrist with the National Hospital Abuja. Thank you very much for staying with us. I am Angela Mweze. Goodbye.